Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all out there in space. <laughs> Welcome into our study of living like you belong to God. We are now at week four, and I'm just going to read you the introduction to our lesson. And then we'll pray. The Old Testament teaches that God, the law, the temple, and the nation of Israel are all holy. But does any of that apply to us now? What about Christians? Believers are called saints, but what does that mean? I'm going to welcome my sister into the room, and here we are in all our radiant splendor. <laughs> Good morning, Adrian. Good morning. Good to see you. I'm hoping maybe that Nancy will show up a little later. Oh, and I get this in the right place here. So we are going to pray, and then we'll get rolling. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this bright new day that you've given us to study your word and to learn to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I just ask that you, um, by your spirit, wherever people are participating in this, that you would um, search our hearts and minds and uh, speak to us, teach us, lead us, O Lord, for we want to do your will in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm just going to read what it says here. In his letter to various young churches, Peter described the incredible blessings of salvation and then turned his attention to how we are to live in light of those blessings. We're reading 1 Peter 1, verses 13 to 16, and we are going to circle every occurrence of the words you, your, yourselves, which indicate the recipients of this letter and we're going to draw a cloud around every occurrence of the word holy i want to change my camera just slightly here there okay you ready to go adrian mm -hmm. therefore prepare your minds for action keep sober in spirit fix your Hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you holy. Mm -hmm. Missed it. Be holy yourselves also in all your behavior because it is written you shall be holy for i am holy all right good um we're going to read it again Wait a oh yeah oh yeah and we're going to mark every uh instruction well where's my underliner on huh? my famous underliner on my desk <laughs> Oops. All right. So we're looking for verbs when we're all, uh, when we're looking for, um, instructions, right? Yes. All right. Number one mm -hmm. verb. Therefore prepare your minds, prepare your minds for action. Yeah. So that's one. Keep I'm going to Yep. Keep sober in spirit. That's number two. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought. That's three. To you. At the revelation of Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed. So that's a negative one. That's to number the former four. former lusts. which were yours in your ignorance. In ignorance, yes. But like the Holy One who called you, be yourselves also. Be. Be holy yourselves also. So that's number five. In all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. 
Okay, so those are instructions. So as obedient children, what were these believers instructed to do? Mm. You're instructed as obedient children. Do not be conformed to the former lusts. Which were, yes. Yes, but be holy. Don't be conformed. That's not conforming. And we, we had all of these instructions here. Let me turn over the page. How should their obedience to these instructions affect their lifestyle and why? Well, let's say their, let's say our. How should our obedience to these instructions affect our lifestyle and why? Well, we talked in this, we've been talking in this study about holiness. What, do, uh, how does that show up? Okay, so there's some really, um, there's some really uh, uh, descriptive things here. So what, what should our conduct and, and demeanor be? Always prepared, sober, and sober. Yeah, we're prepared in our minds for action. We're prepared to take action. And uh, sober in spirit. What does that mean, do you think? I'm not sure. I've been pondering that for the last five seconds. Okay, <laughs> sober. Um, sober is... We think of it as not being drunk or stoned, but that's not necessarily what it means. Sober. Yeah, that's what I was saying. And that's why I'm trying to figure that out in my head. Kind of, I would say prudent, thoughtful, right? When you're drunk, you're not thoughtful, right? No. <laughs> so thoughtful, thoughtful in your spirit. And then uh, where should our hope be? On the grace that was brought to you, brought that to us. That will be brought to us. When? At the revelation of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, the question was, how how should our obedience to these instruction affect our lifestyle and why? So uh, that, that kind of sober in spirit. Well, so lifestyle then. Think lifestyle. As believers. Okay, so when it says, uh, well, obviously, we're not going to be uh, out to lunch <laughs> on substances, right? Right. But here, and we're, uh, and I think this is really apt to what some of the things that are occurring in my sphere, my, where I uh, live, basically, it, you know, and, and where, uh, you know, my community type things. Keep, fix your hopes completely on the grace to be brought to you. So there's a lot of people in this world who are fixing their hope on this, that, or the other thing. What can you think of that people might be fixing their hope on? The government. Mm -hmm. And I say that because they 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 are hoping the government will do what's right by them but there's no they, guarantee they, there <laughs> gonna get nowhere yeah so um, uh what other things might people put hope in money mm -hmm. relationships their job activities, whatever. Yeah. Okay. And here it says something else. Let's go back on the, read this as God's children. What key characteristics are we to demonstrate? Who are we to be like? We are to be holy like Christ is holy. Yeah. Like the Holy one who called you be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. So holy means sanctified, set apart. 
And uh, it says, don't be conformed to what? The former love, which were yours. So in your previous life, before you were redeemed, we, we all went after things that we, uh, we, thought, we thought were satisfactory or satisfying. And uh, we may well have, um, you know, done things that God would not have considered holy. I know that that's true of me. Oh, it's true of me too. So. Yeah. And I think that if we're honest, all of us, we can say that, you know, even sometimes we, <laughs> we might wander away a little bit and then God brings us back, but we're supposed to be obedient children. So let's go on. Uh, the next reading here is first Peter two verses nine through 10. We're going to circle the word you and cloud holy, same as we did before. And this is on two pages, so I'll be flipping this book around. Okay. But you are, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you but now. are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Okay, good. So what did we learn from marking you? Let's let's um make the points, shall we? I'll make them in point. I'll make uh, put numbers beside them. Well, what's the first thing? A chosen race. That's number 1. A holy a royal priesthood. That's number 2. A holy nation. That's three. A people for God's own possession. That's four. Okay, let's go down to verse. And well, hold on. And, and yeah, but but now we are the people of God. Now it says, but now you are okay, the people just, of God. Wait a minute. Okay. For you were once were not a people, but yeah, and that's the contrast word, right? But yeah. So that we got to number four. So number five. Yeah, and then yeah. we you had not received mercy, but now you have. Okay, so six. So I'm just going to uh, I'm going to put a box around it to make a difference between that, but because it's the count the contrast. For you once were. But now, are there any more buts? No. no. Okay. So what did we learn? Okay, so we learned that. So what is God's purpose then for choosing us? There is a, there is a, um, a phrase there that tells us the answer, why, which why answers the purpose thing. So what did we read? Oh, there's a but here in the first Sorry. Sorry, I didn't miss that one too. Yeah. Read it aloud. Okay. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Why? So that you may proclaim the excellency of him. Excellent. So, yeah. So the answer to the question why comes from the phrase after the phrase so that. Why? So that you may what? Proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. So this is, I'm just going to put this in here like this, and I'm going to write purpose on my text. That's God's purpose. Why? Yes. Okay. Peter's wording here, you are dot dot so that you may makes it clear that with the privilege of being God's chosen possession comes responsibility. So what is the responsibility and how does it apply to your life today or my life today, our lives? So the, uh, the, the privilege is that we were, we were called out of darkness into God's light 
so that what's our responsibility? Proclaim the excellencies of him. Yeah. Who's and, called us. Yeah. So I'm going to underline that, that, cause that's the verb proclaim, proclaim is the verb. So our responsibility is to proclaim. So what does that look like in life? It requires witnessing, but not everybody witnesses the same way. Well, wit what does witnessing mean? Talking to others about God. And what, what would you tell people about God? According to well, what we've just would, written. What we've just written. I, read, I should say. I would, I would tell them of what he's done for me and his excellent, and how he, all his excellencies. Mm -hmm. So we are witnesses to God's work in our own lives. And that's what we proclaim. Mm -hmm. God made, and we are witnesses to God, keeping his promises to answering prayer to all kinds of things. Those are the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into light. Okay. We're going over to page 47. And we just kind of answered that question. How can please? Yes. Okay, so this is what we're going to observe uh, out of 1 Peter, verses 11 and 12. And then we're going to flip the page and read Matthew 5, 16. And we're going to uh, circle you and yours. And we're going to underline instructions. Okay? Okay. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain. That's it. From Abstain. fleshly lusts, mm -hmm. which wage war against the soul. Keep your, oh, that's a, that's another one. Yeah, behavior. Act, yeah, I had to circle your though. Mm -hmm. Be, behavior excellent among the Gentiles. Why? So that in the thing in which they slander you, as evil doers, they may be. They may because of your good deeds as they as they observe them. Glorify God in the day of visitation. How do you read that? Because it's confusing. Yeah. And then uh, let, Matthew 5, 16. Let, okay. Let your light shine before men. Okay. So that's a. In such a way that they may see your your. Good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. Oh, you know, this is just really speaking to me very strongly right now um, in the ministry that you and I share that, you know, in, in that work, I, I go to lots of different people and let's classify them then as Gentiles because they're not believers yet. Um, that that that's my responsibility when I go and speak to them and uh, all of that. That that um, even even when they slander us as as evil doers, that uh, they see because of our good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay, so let's read this insight box. By using the phrase aliens and strangers, Peter is saying this world is not our home. Our real home is heaven. The world Gentiles in 1 Peter 2.12 is a synonym for non-Christians. Yeah, and on, honestly, this little song from my childhood came. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be led home in this world anymore. <laughs> we are aliens and strangers. <laughs> okay, so the instructions that we um that we were given the first one abstain from fresh fleshly lusts. Why? What do they do? Wage war against the soul. 
Oh my goodness. The Lord just spoke to me now on, on a situation with a friend that I have. And this is happening in that person, waging war against their soul because, the, you know, they haven't learned this truth. Abstain from certain things because they wage war in your soul. When you're at, when you're at war in your own soul, are you rested? Are you contented? No, you are upset and anxious and restless. That's not what God wants for us. Okay, so what's the next thing? Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. Right, right, because we are now ambassadors. We're aliens. We're ambassadors for the King of Kings. And so if we're speaking crassly or if we are gossiping or if we are participating in questionable activities, right, that they're not... They're not uh, observing our conduct and glorifying God. They're saying you Christians are a bunch of hypocrites or whatever, liars, right. or whatever. And what are we supposed to do? I love this, you know, so I'm going to star this. The first time I studied um, First Peter and then we were taught in this whole thing about letting your light shine. So what yeah, is let your light of? shine before men. Yeah, why? So that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Yes. Glorify God. Okay, so now there, there's a difference between people doing good works, right? So when, when believers are doing good things, righteous things, right things, kind, whatever it is, godly things, we're not doing it for applause. We're doing it so that people glorify God. That's a big difference, would you say? Yeah. And who do those deeds prove that we belong to? God. Yes. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm not going to that church because it's full of hypocrites? What does that tell you about the lifestyle of some of the people who attend that church? And what effect does it have on the unsaved? It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, the way I see it, there's two ways to bring the unsaved into your church. Proclaiming God's glory or through the music you play. Or the or what, entertainment. Or, yeah, entertainment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're not playing music that's lifting God up and you're bringing the unsaved into your church, then you're not a church. Not a God Bible believing church, hmm. in okay. my view. Okay, so here's another rubber hits the road uh, question. What about your lifestyle? Would you be labeled as a hypocrite? Why or why not? We're not going to talk about it. That's just something for God to speak into your heart about our own personal lifestyle and about our own being a hypocrite. Uh, part of being a hypocrite with, would be that um, if we think it's fine to pilfer stuff, you know what pilfer means? Steal. Yeah, basically it's stealing. But it's it's like, oh, well, you know, they've got lots of paper. They've got lots of ink. I'll do my printing there. Or, you know, without, without uh, asking or getting permission or without um, paying for it. Pilfering. Pilfering is a really thing that makes a, a, a big difference in, you know, because if you're willing to pilfer little things, you're probably willing to compromise on other areas of conduct too. So this was very convicting to me a few years ago that I have to be very careful about that. Now, let's just say some businesses and churches and whatnot have things that you're supposed to pilfer, like their pens. You're supposed to take their pens. Right, because their pens, their pens have advertising on them, like you know. So yeah, so I, 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 I've got a bunch of pens that I have. Well, I'm not calling it pilfering because it's it's their sales, um, it's their advertising, right? You take those things, but but we have to be very conscientious about this. Okay, observe another indication of holiness in the life of a believer, is how that person responds to a. Authority. 
<laughs> now, this is a message for the women. And I'm just looking straight into the camera and saying, women, pay attention because your life of godliness has to do with this. And the trouble that we as women have with this goes all the way back to Genesis. Okay? So just leaving that hanging right there. So we're going to read 1 Peter 2, verses 13 to 7, and we're going to uh, circle you, yourselves, your, and we're going to underline the instruction. All right. Nobody likes this word. What's the first verb? Submit yourselves. Mm -hmm. Why? For the Lord, for the Lord's sake. To who? To every human, every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. Why? For such, for such is the will of God that by doing right, you. Okay, may so siren... uh, just wait now. Uh, doing right. Oh, okay. You may silence. No, I'm not going to do that. The ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men. Yep. And do not use your, do not, I got to deal with that, your freedom oh. as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Ah. Honor all this way. people. So there's a contrast between how we use, okay? Yes. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Okay, so, all right, here we go. So let's, let's count them up again. So, um, number one. Submit yourselves to the, for the Lord's sake to every human institution. Okay, we'll just leave that there. The next instruction do right. <clears throat> do right Dudley do right that's a good Canadian thing <laughs> okay what's uh, the next thing act as free men yep do not use your freedom as a covering for evil use it your freedom as bond slaves of God so that's five things Honor all people. Six. Love the brotherhood. Seven. Fear God. Eight. Honor the king. Nine. Okay, that word back there, nobody likes. Is this, okay, so I'm not going to go there. Um, so what do people call for all believers to do in verse 13 to 15? Submit. Submit while acting as free men. Free men. This is a very important mitigating principle right now in the time that we are in. This is uh, recorded February the 6th of 2024. And many things are coming to light in uh, North America, around the world. All right. So what is the purpose of authority? Generally speaking, verse 14. To tells rule me. and regulate and to what is punish, this the scripture? punish evildoers. Yep. So that's a, I'm going to say a, that's a, that's a, that's what, that's what governors, the king or the governor sent by the king. Punishment of evil And then doers. praise those who do right. Yes. Okay. So what if the individual who holds that office is ungodly? Or if you don't respect the man or woman holding that office, do you still have to submit 
Explain your answer. What's it say up here? Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. I have an answer. Yes, we do have to submit ourselves to the governing authorities. It's just biblical. Yes. <clears throat> but my question then comes to this. <clears throat> what if they are, what if what they are asking us to do is against the Bible and against God? Then what do we do? Well, what's the principle then? Obey God. What's the, what's the first principle? If you go all the way back into Exodus, the first principle is love the Lord God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And the second is love your neighbor as yourself. Right. right. So we that those that's the first guiding first and second guiding principle and if the authority set before us is asking us to contravene what god has clearly set out then we are not then we obey then we, we should obey be god. obeying god we obey God. So where authority causes us to disobey or contravene God or to blaspheme God, then uh, we don't obey authority. There are many things in our culture right now, today, which have been occurring for a few years now that cause Christians to have to decide whether they're going to uh, uh, obey God or blaspheme him. And I'm just going to say right here and right now that the misuse of the rainbow is blasphemy, blaspheming God. Just leaving that there. So people have to decide who they're going to serve. All right. Um, okay, so there's something here. So if you don't, okay, so what if the individual who holds that office is ungodly? Or if you don't respect the man holding that office... Well, what's our job? Who gave the person the authority? God. Yes. God. So we, the governors and kings and rulers, we may have chosen by voting. And that's questionable too in our culture. We understand that. I'm not going to go into that controversy. But we as believers ultimately understand that who is the final authority on all these matters? God. Yes. So because we understand that God is the final authority on all of these matters, it, it says submit yourself for the Lord's sake. So we're not doing this on our own behalf, but because this is pleasing to God and for his sake. And we're remembering that we are aliens and strangers who are representing him in our culture. Now, you know, that may mean that some people of us as believers have hard jobs to do to hold those authority people to account. It's not like we're doormats. We are not. God didn't call us to be polite. He called us to be holy. <laughs> And we have plenty of examples of the prophets of old and of Jesus and the apostles. What will be the result of a believer's practice of holiness according to verse 15? We'll silence the ignorance of foolish men. Yes, our doing right, our practicing righteousness may silence the ignorance of foolish men. So... Because God's way is always right. How we employ that sometimes in our life is not the right employment <laughs> or the, you know what I mean? The right method or the, the right attitude, but God's righteousness and holiness is completely right and completely holy. All right. Yeah. So what is to be our, be our motivation for obedience, avoiding punishment Explain your answer from this passage. <sighs> uh, 
Now I'm just thinking, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it quickly because I, I have to think as I, well, I'm just going to fill some dead airspace because I've been studying, uh, reading again, the accounts from Genesis and I'm in, I'm in Exodus right now. And we remember that Joseph, one of the patriarchs, uh, was thrown in a pit by his jealous brothers and he was sold into slavery in Egypt. And he served his father by being a shepherd um, before he got, his brothers did that. And when he got to Egypt, he served the Pharaoh and, and uh, Potiphar, who was one of the governors of Egypt under Pharaoh. So that kind of mitigates my thinking. What were you thinking of now that you've listened to me? <laughs> the way, no, no, I'm the way, uh, and I'm not. We're, so this is motivation. We got to talk about our motivation. Yeah, my motivation is, is as long as I'm obeying God. And. Um, and then I'm um, being obedient to God. And that means obey, uh, honoring the rulers, honor men. It means it all. But it, the first and foremost is being obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so um, this acting as free men, because Christ, for freedom, Christ has set us free. That's, that's given to us in scripture. So God... Jesus came to set us free from the law of sin and death in our spirits eternally forever. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be acting as free men, but we're not using that as a covering for evil. And what is the contrast? How do we use our freedom? As bond slaves of God. Right. And as bond slaves of God, what is the conduct that and the attitude that we're going to have that follows here. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the king. Yes. Okay. So the king might be an absolute heinous person, the prime minister, the president, whoever is in charge may be heinous people. But because we are bond slaves of God that should mitigate our conduct and our attitude and all of that. Okay. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with avoiding punishment. I'd rather avoid punishment. <laughs> yeah, I would that, too. But that doesn't mean that we appease evildoers or that we placate wrongdoers into right. wrongdoing because we are representative of the king of kings. All right. So Peter's concern in verse 16. Mm -hmm. That we would use our, we would use our freedom as a cover, as a covering for the, e for evil. Yeah. So don't, instead don't... of being, yeah. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, uh, yeah. So if you're exercising your freedom, but really in the back, in the background or however, you are actually using that to, um, <clears throat> yeah, to do evil or to, uh, encourage evil or to all of that, encourage someone else to do evil. No, 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 no. Okay. The four points Peter makes in verse 17 and how each, oh Yeah relates to a believer's behavior as a citizen. Well, I think we all did that. We did that already. Those are what 4.678 and yeah. 9. We already talked about that. Good. All right. Now we're reading Romans chapter 13 verses 1 to 7. And I believe we're crossing over a few pages here. So we're going from page 50 over to page 52. 50, and we are yeah, 50. And uh, we are going to underline each reference to authority, including the cinnamon, synonyms, <laughs> synonyms, 
Um, and we're going to circle every reference to believers. And that's what we are doing here. Okay, so Romans. Okay, so... Uh, all right, so uh, here, he's be, just begin. Every person... I think that's... He means believers here. Every person... Yeah. Is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. Okay. Why? For there is no authority except from God. Authority. And? And those which exist are established by God. So the those which exist, that's authorities. Oh, okay. Thank you. Are established by God. Now there's a therefore, and we have to see the, the therefore. Therefore, therefore, whoever resists authority mm -hmm. as abhors the ordinance of God. And they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Well, wait a minute. Uh, are we going to mark the whoever's in that? I don't know whether to or not. Um, it's, it was supposed to be about believers. So I think he's speaking to believers. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, whoever resists the sword has opposed the ordinance of God. And yeah. Okay. And then themselves. And they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Okay. Why? For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior. But for evil, do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. Are the same? That's authority. I think. I would say. Mm -hmm. For it is a minister of God. I'm going to just underline that whole thing. To you. Yes. Uh -huh. For good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not. Oh, that's bear the authority, the... Is that right? The authority. Yeah, it's that's what bear. I'm thinking. Oh, it. it does not. Okay. Yeah. Does not bear um, the sword for nothing. Sword for nothing, for it is a minister of God, an avenger. I'm gonna Aven underline. Yeah. Who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Okay, wait a minute. we got to turn the page. And there's a oh, therefore. Yes. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for con conscience sake. Okay, so uh, not only, and I'm going to put the but also. I'm just boxing but because I'm... For because of this, you also pay taxes for rulers are servants of God devoting themselves to this very thing. Render to all what is due to do them. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say underline all, all. And them. And them. Mm -hmm. Tax to whom whom taxes due. Custom to whom custom fear to whom fear honor to whom honor okay all right so um okay so this may be rankling as we're reading this <laughs> in your spirit because uh we know everyone in the world knows dishonorable despicable people who are taxing um and using their authority to do, to gain taxes in um, despicable ways. We in North America and many other places in the world elect our people, select our people, however you want to say it. Okay, so the guiding pr principle that we have here is that God decides who is in power because God has an overarching plan for everything, right? 
for the world, for salvation, for uh, punishment of evildoers. He's got all that in mind. And we only live in this little time for our short little lifetimes. Poof, we're a puff of smoke. Okay. But this may rankle us. It may rankle you who are out there in the universe <laughs> watching this. Um, just thinking about some of the despicable things that you have to endure for fear of punishment from these authorities, right? All right. So why is it necessary to submit to all authority? And it's right there. <laughs> Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection. Why? Not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. So there's two reasons, right? Wrath is punishment for wickedness that you have done. And two, it's for your conscience. Now, who, who is your conscience accountable to? God. God. And who has to live with your conscience? Me. Yes. Yeah. So your conscience before God, right? Um. So according to verses six and seven, what is a believer's responsibility to obedience besides, uh, besides responsibility, sorry, to authorities besides obedience? What is it? Pay taxes. Pay your taxes. Uh, and then it goes on to say, render all. Render to, to all, all what is due them. Yeah. Tax to whom tax is due. Custom to whom custom is. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Okay, so there are several different things in here. So tax has to do with your money custom so in other words if uh, okay so um one thing i learned when we were homeschooling and because i learned business letters and that when i was in high school a hundred years ago <laughs> that when you are writing um letters or corresponding with people there is a formal way of addressing them so if you know there's customs so if the custom is, for example, that it's, <clears throat> that it is shows honor when you enter a room, uh, when you enter a building, you take off your hat. When you go in for men, when you go into church, you take off your hat. That's a custom. It's also a custom that when a woman comes into a room, the gentlemen rise that is a custom that shows honor. I don't think I've seen that very often, that particular one. You see it in old movies. <laughs> um, I haven't seen that never. <laughs> customs. So, you know, like, and there are customs that if you are going, you've never seen that one. <laughs> That's because uh, you live in a, a slightly different generation. But if you see, watch it on old movies, you'll see that. <clears throat> that when there are people around the table and the lady are... Um, arrives at the table. If there's a lady at the table, she remains seated and all the gentlemen, you can hear their chairs scraping as they all stand. And they sit down after she has sat down because um, it's it's as if they're, she's the queen, right? And so you, you rise in the presence of the queen. And like, and so, you know, in terms of um, nobility, you may bow, you may curtsy, you may lower your eyes. There's all those customs in Japan. You bow, right? There's different things in Korea to, to honor someone is to bring food with you, a gift of food or bring a gift. All right. Those are the customs fear to whom fear. What is that? That I don't, un I, I can't you know answer that. I'm just going to go over to uh, Bible Gate, or no, not Bible Gate. I'm going to go over here to Blue Leather Bible. It's online. You're not going to see it because I didn't set it up for you to do, but I'm going to look that passage up. So that is Romans. 
And what is it? Thir Romans yeah. 13. Romans 13. I'll just look that up. And oh, it's in the King James Version. Let's go to New American Standard 95. And uh, that is verse 7. Because it has, okay, so render therefore to all their dues. Oh, Romans 13, 7. Tax, custom to whom custom, fear to whom care. Oh, so I'm opening up, I, I, sh I wish I could just pop this in. Let me just see if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. Um, I can do a screen share right here. Ooh, I don't know if it'll show the screen share. Um, if I turn that off, can you see the screen share in there? No. No. Okay. Never mind. Um, never mind. Okay. I'll just speak it through for you. So I've just opened at blueletterbible.org and I am scrolling down on verse seven to find out what fear means. It's phobos. That's where we get the word phobia. Fear to whom fear phobos. Um, it, uh, so I'm going to see what it says in vines, fear, fearful, fearfulness. It first had the meaning of flight, that which is caused by being scared. Then that which may cause flight, fear, dread, terror, always with this significance in the four gospels. Okay. Um, so it does mean fear, reverential fear. It also can mean reverential fear. So if you have a reverential fear, that means that, um, it's a deep respect. Let's just say reverential fear. And then of God, here's a fear of God as a controlling motive of the life in matters, spiritual and moral, not a mere fear fear of his power and righteous retribution, although we should fear that as well, but a wholesome dread of displeasing him, a fear which banishes the terror that shrinks from his presence. And uh, it's talking about a uh, passage in Romans 8, and which influences the disposition and attitude of one whose circumstances are guided by trust in God through the indwelling spirit of God. So it, it can be rendered as terror, but it means a reverential uh, respect. Now, when we think about God, fear of the Lord, well, uh, uh, our creator is sovereign and he controls our very breath. He controls the weather. He controls princes and kings. So fear to whom fear. So respect people. For one thing, um, and honor to whom honor. So that kind of goes to the same thing in the sense. In other words, when it comes right down to it, we are supposed to love God first and we love our neighbors as ourself, recognizing that every human being breathing on this planet has been created in the image of God. And so when we remember things like that, then we understand respect and honor. And then Jesus command, you know, um, do unto others, not do one to others, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Okay. All right. So how does this relate to our study on holiness? Okay, well, I suppose, I suppose that by honoring, doing what the the scriptures say, First Peter says we're honoring God. Yes, and thus when, being holy. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And it also demonstrates to the world what being set apart to God means. It doesn't mean we dress in a particular way, black robes. <laughs> it doesn't mean we go to a mountain and uh, or to a building far away and seclude ourselves from others. It means that in our daily um, in our daily dealings on this planet with our fellow humanity, created in the image of God, that we um, 
that we recognize all those things. Now, in some instances, I have to say, I really wrestle and struggle with this because some people are so wicked that it's hard to remember that. But we must remember that. And here's the thing, the Lord gives wisdom and the Lord gives strength to do all those things. We don't do this in our own strength. We do it because the Holy Spirit inside a believer directs and guides and offers a means of self-control because self-control is a part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? So controlling my disgust and loathing of sinful and wickedness conduct coming out in pe people, um, the Holy Spirit um, mitigates our behavior and our conduct mm -hmm. and also helps us to order our thinking about this correctly, right? That's what he's doing in mm -hmm. our study here. All right. In Romans 12, 10, Paul gets to the heart of how holiness is demonstrated in our behavior towards others. And we're going to um, circle one another's. There's only one verse here, Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another. One another. In brotherly love, give preference to one another. One another. In honor. Okay, so uh, what do we see about how believers are to behave towards one another. And here he's speaking when he says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. He's not speaking between you and me and Joe Blow. <laughs> you know, he's speaking about how believers should be speak, uh, be dealing with one another. And so what's the first thing? Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Okay, so, so... Be devoted to other believers in brotherly love. That says it all. Brotherly love, right? Okay. And what's the next? And then give, give preference to one another in honor. In other words, we don't take the best seats. We don't take the best cookie. We don't take the first in line. We give preference to one another in love. And so did in my mind that silly cartoon, Chip and Dale. After you. No, after you. Oh, indeed, after you. I insist. <laughs> but that's that's truth in a way, right? Mm -hmm. We're not all sitting. We're not going to, you know, <laughs> when we when it's time to go to the table, that when, when we go to a church potluck or any kind of thing like that, you know, we're not motoring to the front of the line to get the stuff first. No, we think about who needs, you know, who needs some help. Like some of those little old gentlemen and men and ladies need some, you know, they, they need to help, have some help. First of all, getting in line. And second of all, getting their stuff to their place where they're going to eat it. So, you know, honoring, honoring the people who are believers in age as well. Okay. So practical examples. Can you think of anything else besides what I just? Oh, I, I always help Patsy. Yes. Yes. So there's disabled people. There's people with little children sometimes and they, they, they need help with the. At ladies Bible study, I'm always doing something to help Carol. Yep. And so that's, that is, that is it. We just look for ways to help others and we don't, and we consider others be uh, you know as much as or even before ourselves that doesn't mean we become doormats that doesn't mean we become slaves that doesn't mean anything but in the body of believers with our christian brothers and sisters we're supposed to be thinking about others giving preference to them in honor as an honor to them it's a wonderful thing though when when uh, when someone does that, then you just really feel so loved. So anyway, well, we're at the end of today. So what's going to happen now? I'm going to move to a different uh, slide and I'm going to read the wrap up and pray. Hang with us. Just a minute.
The term chosen people, which used to apply only to Israel, is now used for both Jewish and Gentile believers. The responsibility to reflect God's holiness, once entrusted solely to the nation of Israel, has now been given to the church as well. God said to the descendants of Jacob, the people of Israel, You shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's from Exodus 19, verse 6. Now believers are called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. 1 Peter 2, 9. Peter also called Christians a holy priesthood, as in chapter 2, verse 5 of 1 Peter. God's purpose in choosing believers for himself is so that they may declare his praises before others. Believers should live so that their Heavenly Father's qualities are evident in their lives. They are to serve as witnesses of the glory and grace of God, who called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2.9 So then, in practicing holiness, we are reflecting God's character to the world around us. All of our behavior must be pleasing to God, including our submission to authority. Following God does not give us the right to resist or defy the secular authority he has placed over us. God has established all authority, and by respecting the office and honoring authority, we show the world that we honor God. In other words, Being under authority is reflecting holiness. However, we are always to be careful never to allow the law of the land to overrule the law of the Lord. How are you doing? Are you paying your taxes? Obeying speed limits? Obeying the law? Honoring those officials placed in authority over you, such as the president or the prime minister or the king? Your supervisor at work? In Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do want to be an example. We do want to glorify you. We want people to glorify you as they see our conduct in the world around us. Sometimes, Lord, that causes us to hold people to account for the law in of God. And that kind of keeps us in a, in a constant place of examining our conscience before you, whether we're doing what is right in your sight or just following along with some unjust, un, unholy, un unrighteous law. Father God, Holy Spirit, keep us humble before you. Help us to learn your ways, know your principles, understand your word, and help us to grow as obedient children in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.